At the farm between, we grow a wide variety of cold hardy fruits. All of our crops start as flowers and require insect pollinators to set fruit. Unfortunately, honeybee and native pollinator populations are on the decline. Multiple factors including pesticide use, habitat loss, and disease and parasites are to blame. We had noticed a decline on our farm over the past 20 years and a few years ago started working proactively to provide habitat and floral resources to help pollinator populations rebound. We are expecting a return on our habitat improvement investment in terms of increased yields, more biodiversity, and improved pest management from beneficial insects and birds. After doing a farm habitat analysis to observe the timing of flowering plants and their abundance over an entire growing season, we saw a floral resource gap or dearth in July and August. This graph is an example of the timing of flowering we observed early in the season in 2013 as part of a Northeast Sustainable Research and Education grant. Most of our tree fruit and berries flower in spring and early summer, and we keep large areas of our farm unmowed to encourage milkweed, goldenrod, and asters that flower in late summer and fall. The objective of our study was to look at cover crops that could provide bee forage during the July and August dearth period. Cover crops are traditionally used to build soil organic matter, prevent erosion, suppress weeds, and scavenge nitrogen. We wanted to add to this multi-purpose list by seeing which cover crops were valuable pollinator and beneficial insect floral resources. We also hosted educational workshops on our farm to raise awareness of how to provide habitat to enhance pollinator populations in our working landscape. In our workshops, we identified the native bumblebees and solitary nesting bees found on our farm, as well as our own honeybees. We also discussed the importance of providing nesting and overwintering habitats for native bees. We visited our pollinator sanctuary and discussed our progress. Throughout the workshop, it was interesting to see which plants the bees were visiting based on the time of day and bloom quality. For example, our buckwheat was empty in the afternoon and is usually teeming with pollinators in the morning. The tours also visited our research plots, which included buckwheat, a northeast bee forage mix from Ernst Conservation Seeds, and a new cover crop for us called Phasalia. Workshop participants also learned more about how Phasalia, buckwheat, and the bee forage mix can contribute to on-farm pollinator conservation. The buckwheat and Phasalia established well and were competitive with weeds. Unfortunately, our bee forage mix did not establish well except for the Maximilian sunflower and some lupin. The rest of the species in the mix were outcompeted by broadleaf annual weeds, mainly Gallinsoga. This showed us that we need to rethink our planting strategy for this mix. We also learned that honeybees prefer buckwheat and bumblebees prefer Phasalia when both blooms are available to choose from. The timing of flowering from our early summer planting is shown on this graph. We let all of our plots go to seed and were not able to find any volunteers growing back the next year, except for the perennial sunflower, of course. Growers are often cautioned to not let buckwheat go to seed. From our experience, this would only be a problem if you were replanting the same season. We also found that Phasalia was the most attractive to tarnish plant bug adults and produced the most nymphs. Perhaps it has value as a trap crop. From what we've learned, we will continue to plant multifunctional cover crops time to bloom during July and August. Our seeding mix will include buckwheat and phasalia, as well as mustards, borage, and annual sweet white clover. Phasalia is a new tool in our toolbox, especially since it is beneficial to bumblebees that do most of the spring pollinating work on our fruit crops.